All right, guys. So I'm working on a property here, um, doing a bunch of work on the on the house. Um, and one of the things I need to do is install a new garage door. It's got uh, one of the doors I was able to save actually, put a new spring on it. But the door on this side was uh, pretty well pretty well trash. So we're gonna go ahead and install a new one. And I thought I'd take you through and just kind of show you the steps in the process. First thing that we did is uh, took down the old track, took down the door and the track, and pretty straightforward. Just take out all the screws and all the leg leg bolts, uh, leg screws, and it'll come off, come off. One thing I'll say is uh, be careful when you're taking the spring off the old door. Do that first. Um, this one just had the had the long springs, so uh, have the door up so the tension is off the springs. Carefully undo those cables. If it if your door has uh, has a torsion spring, one that spins, um, look for another video on how you take the tension off of those because those things, when you undo those, they can be wicked and they can hurt you. So be real careful on taking those torsion springs off. But in our case, uh, the door assembly is off and uh, or the uh, door track is off, and we're going to go ahead and get this new one installed. So. I'm just going to kind of run through the steps here. It's a little bit dark in this garage, so I apologize for that. Hopefully you'll be able to see all right. So when you get a garage door, you get a pile of hardware. This is one bag. There's a few bags of hardware. Um, all your different brackets, all your different hinges, your cable. There's, there's a bunch of hardware. So, you know, it's pretty important that you take your time and follow the instructions pretty closely. The instruction guide, there's 30, like 30 pages of instructions on this thing. So. Make sure you take your time following the instructions. But first thing we're gonna do is, um, some of these things come, like these are actually the bottom brackets that go on the bottom of the door here. And they come, you gotta, they're, they're a stamping. So you just have to break those apart. And I'll take a pliers and snap this little tab off. All right, so first step is to get these hooked onto the door. And if you look at the bracket, Try to get you on a better angle here so you can see this. But on the bracket, there's there's some little some little hooks in here, basically. And these go in these notches in the door. So you slide those into the hole. And then pull up on it. And that basically that locks it in position. And for a lot of these, the these brackets and, and the hinges. We're using these 5 8 um, they're number 14 by 5 8 is what they, they say. So these, these doors are pre-drilled. Careful if you're using an impact that you don't over tighten them so you don't strip it out. So I got that side, I'll go ahead and do the other side. All right, so next step is going to be to install the hinges on the top of the door. And um, so this is, a, this is an ideal door for Menards, and everyone's going to probably be a little bit different, but these hinges <clears throat> are all numbered. And, and the instructions say basically take the, take the hinge number one, which is what I've got here on all these. So same thing, we're going to take those with more of these uh, machine screws. And we're just gonna stick these on the top of the panel. One thing I forgot to mention is um, before you install the door, you wanna make sure you've got door stops in place. Typically it'll be uh, the kind of vinyl vinyl stop. It's got the rubber, um, you know, weather stripping on it. In this case, this garage is all going to get sided, so this uh, this metal is going to get ripped off, and so I'm just leaving these wood stops on here, and that'll that'll be great for getting the door installed. Um, but if you don't have some kind of a stop, make sure you get that installed before you proceed to setting the door. The next step is to actually set this first panel in place. And I'm gonna have a couple things on hand. I've got some shims. Uh, it's important to make sure we get this first panel sitting level. If it's not level, you know, it, your track and everything's gonna wanna go off and, and you'll be messed up at the top. So first panel needs to be level. 
I've got a four foot level here and I've also got some three inch screws so we can use these screws to hold the door up against the actual door stop. So let's set it in place and see how, see how it looks for level. So I'm just gonna center this in the opening here so it's kind of even on the stop on both sides. Let it sit there with its own weight. So I can see that this side, this left side over here needs to come up. So I'm just gonna stick a couple of shims in here. And take your time with the step. Make sure you really nail your level. All right, that right there looks good. So I'm just gonna take a couple of these long screws, put them in at an angle here. And that just kind of pins the door against the, the door frame. There, now it won't go anywhere. All right, now the instructions say to go ahead and attach the cable now. So these will be attached to those first bottom brackets that I installed. And this of course is the cable that will run up and attach to the uh, spring when we're done. All right, now moving on to the second panel. Um, the first panel is the one, obviously it's got the weather stripping that goes along the bottom. The, the other, the rest of the panels, I don't think really make any difference. They're just, they're all, they're all the same. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our hinges on the top of this one. Again, this is where it's important to check your instructions. So uh, the instructions on this particular door say to use the number two hinges on the outside. And then on this center one, we're still we're using a number one hinge again. So same sheet metal screws that we used before. And we're going to go ahead and set it in the hole. I've got another set of the three inch screws. I'm gonna use those to pin it in place just like I did the first one. Now we'll take our sheet metal screws and get the, the hinges that we originally applied to the first door. We'll get those attached to or the first panel. We'll get those attached to the second panel now. The next step is we're going to attach these roller brackets. So these are going to accept the rollers that go in the track. And um, in the instructions, it says to put them three and a quarter inches down, which aligns them with this um, bottom hole here. And then there are two small holes on the bottom. And we're using those same uh, machine screws that we're using before. Now for this strut, basically what this strut does is strengthen the top of the door so when you put a garage door opener on it, it um, just provides you know, structural integrity basically to the top of the door. And we're gonna use, in this kit, there's a, there's a separate bag and these are basically self-tapping screws. They don't, you don't have holes provided in the door from the factory, so we're just gonna take four of these and either a drill or an impact driver, either one impact driver's my choice, but um, looks like we're gonna line this thing up. 
Looks to me like in the picture, they're not real clear, but it looks like they're bringing it down and basically touching the top of this roller bracket. All right, so it looks like I got ahead of myself a little bit on this top section. I've got to put the door opener bracket under that hinge. So this gets slid under the strut, behind that hinge. And I'll reinstall these. And then on the top there, we use a self-tapper. All right, now it's time to install the rollers. Um, top roller brackets, obvious on these, um, on your middle three, middle two, actually, you can go in, a, in the, uh, position closer to the door or the position further away from the door and I think that actually is supposed to go in the position further away from the door so just run through stick these all in including the bottom panel all right now I'm moving on to the track hardware and I've already uh, put together uh, the left side over here and you know this is another one of those cases just make sure that you pay close attention to your instructions um, there's a special set of nuts and bolts that are used to attach uh, the track components together what this one wants me to do is take the top holes in the track and they, they go so that the nut goes to the outside, the head of the bolt goes to the inside. So it goes in the top holes of the track and then the bottom holes of this flag bracket. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this to get it aligned as straight as I can. Go ahead and tighten those down. So the next step is these, um, I don't know what you call them, track brackets. So kind of a standoff bracket. And they go down uh, the center section here where it's slotted. And it looks like they basically go through the slot of the track. And then also through the slot of the bracket itself so we've got kind of maximum flexibility here and these are just finger tight at this point until we get it up on the wall okay guys so i got the track installed on the wall and i this is just not trying to do this by myself and and film at the same time is uh didn't work out very well so i'll just show you what i did basically um, but basically I've got the track up a half inch off the ground. I just put a couple shims off of there and the instructions say to hold the track uh, approximately half inch away from the door. So I just got a half inch uh, board here that I use as a spacer and you need to mark your two brackets here and then also your top, what they call a flag bracket up there. There's three lag screws that go in there. So uh, I had to get everything finagled, make sure it was a half inch uh, away from the door, mark my locations, drilled with a 3 16 drill bit, and then I came back with my lag screws and got that lagged into the door. So, sorry I couldn't get that on film, it's just too much to do. 
uh, by myself. And then also then I came back and I tightened up uh, the nuts on on the on the track hardware that I'd done previously. So that's where we're at. Time to do the top sections track. Okay, so now it's time to install the horizontal track. And I've done this one on this side. I'm, just, I'm not sure how easy this will be to show on camera. I'm gonna do the best that I can. So um, it's kind of dark over here. You can see that I'm attaching, um, what I'm gonna be doing is attaching to this flag bracket, they call it here, which is basically the top of the, your vertical track. So to that, you're going to attach your horizontal track, the curve section. And then up here, on the top of your flag bracket up there, you're going to connect that piece of angle iron. And I've already installed this piece of angle on the curve section of the track. Pretty straightforward, just a couple of bolts to do that. Um, and then in order to get this I guess there's a couple ways you can do this on the instructions. They talk about temporarily supporting the horizontal track by hanging by a rope, but I've just, I took a ladder and knocked a couple of blocks of styrofoam out of the packaging. That's really close to the height that I need. Um, so I'll just use that to support it as I get everything bolted into place. I'll finagle your track around your top wheel. I'm just going to very lightly put a couple of bolts in here so it kind of stays where it's supposed to be. All right, now get my temporary blocks. Get the track set up on the temporary blocks, roughly just kind of square off the garage door. And I'm coming back up to my flag bracket. And I've got a three inch bolt that runs through here. Three eighths, and that not three inch, three eighths. Okay, so that now is at least sitting where it won't tip. Let's snug these up just a little bit more before I tighten those all the way. I'm going to come back to this side over here. Hopefully, be able to reuse bracket that was in here before, since this did have a garage door in here before. So just kind of finagle until you find a spot. And I'm actually going to, I need just a little more height. So I'm gonna stick another block up here until I get the bracket over here on the door side until uh, the track is, until the, the two sections of the track are uh, sitting kind of square to each other. Okay, so I've got a hole that's there, but this is a 3 8 bolt that goes in here, so I just need to drill out my uh, hanging bracket. the bracket just has some small holes. And the hardware kit has a just a regular 3/8 bolt that goes through here. I 
now it's actually supported. So now I'll just go back and tighten up the hardware up here on the track side that I just snugged up before. And this track will be officially hanging. So the last step here with these, just to make sure that the horizontals are installed correctly is I'm gonna check the square. And in order to do that, I'm gonna measure from, I'm gonna measure, I'll come from this side. I'm gonna measure from that end of the track to a consistent spot on the garage door. I'm just gonna to come to this bracket here. And I'm at 146 and a quarter. And then I'll do the same thing from this side. <laughs> 146 and a quarter. They're within like an eighth of an inch, actually. So good enough. If those weren't square, um, you know, just have to bend your brackets one way or another. You want your garage door, obviously, to go straight up and down. So just tweak those back and forth, whatever you need to, to get that square. Before I move on to the spring, I want to adjust this top panel. So if you come out here, you can see how everything's pretty well flush to the stops. And then you get this top panel and you can see how it, there's a gap. It's actually, it's actually tipped back. And I have seen this lots of times on just exist, exist, existing garage doors too. So all we have to do to fix that is this top roller assembly, which is loosen up these bolts here. And once that's loose, then you can just slide your the door back. This this thing is on a slide, so get the door kind of pressed back so that it's tight against the jam, and then just retighten these, and you'll be good to go. Okay, it's time to get this spring installed. So. The first step is to install the spring brackets on either side. Um, take your hardware back off here that you put on before to this horizontal angle. Run that through the bracket and then there's another bolt that you put on the top there. So um, and I'm just going to come in and drill 3 16 inch hole, top and bottom, like so. And then once I pre-drill those, then I'll follow up with some lag screws like that, and then that bracket will be firmly attached to the framing. So the next step is I've got to basically build this torsion tube. So this is the tube that that spring mounts on. And so you've got two, got two pipes here, two chunks of round tubing, and then you've got this adapter. So that goes on there, and then I've got to drill hole like so and then run a 5 8 well that didn't work I've got some of these self tappers left over I'm going to try these much better all right we'll do this I'll do the same side, same thing for the other tube, and then we'll have an assembled torsion tube. All right, so we're gonna assemble this torsion tube, and I'm just gonna follow their instructions pretty closely here. All right, so we need to attach the spring to the winding unit. This is the winding unit. And looks like this is just gonna clip in here. Oh, 
All right. It says now with a partner, lift this up into the cradle of the torsion spring bracket. This would be a little bit easier with a partner. But I don't have one. All right, just a quick run through what I got going on here. So basically this winding mechanism, there's a slot in it and it fits into this retainer here. The drum that the cable's gonna wrap around fits sort of inside that bracket. Um, this side over here, there's kind of a, a, a bushing thing that slides inside of there. Same basic setup. And then the instructions say to measure Look at your spring, this one says 32. You're supposed to measure and make sure that you've got your coils are 32 inches, and then you tighten down these two set, set screws there. So that's what I've done so far. All right, next up we're gonna take the cable, run it behind the rollers. Come up here behind the drone. Oh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but so this cable comes up the back here, and then there is a, a slot in that drum that the end of that cable goes through. So now what I'm going to do is tighten it by hand. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to do this on camera, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this on hand, by hand, and then right here, there's a set screw that takes a 3 16 Allen key, and what that's gonna do is, is get this drum locked onto this torsion tube. All right, I've got that set screw tightened up. Now what I'm gonna do, they provide a little quarter inch hex key that goes into this winder, and I'm just gonna put a couple of turns on here, just to put a little tension on that. Just to tension up that spring, that cable slightly. So I put this carriage bolt in a little bit early, but that's okay. I just pop this nut loose. And this rubber tube retainer goes on there. And I think its purpose is just to make sure that this, um, this whole torsion tube assembly doesn't somehow pop up out of the frame and cause havoc. So I've got two of these. I've got one for this side. And I'll go do the left side too. All right, the time has come to tension up this spring. And it says for a seven foot door, which is what this is, to do 11 and a quarter winds. So there's a stripe on here, and I'm just gonna be counting the number of times that that stripe comes around, and we'll get to 11 and a quarter. Well, right as I hit about 11, the door actually moved up a little bit. So we're... I think that's actually a little too much spring tension. I think the last thing I have to do is Tighten the other set, sp set screws on these drums. So if you lift the garage door up a little bit, you get access. I think there's, I don't know, let me see how many there are.
yeah, there's this, there's there's two on each drum, so that side's already tight. So get those tightened up, and I think we're done. All right, guys, we got a garage door. Not too bad of a project, really. Um, I don't know. It, it's more, I would say, it's just time consuming. It's not a difficult process. It's just a lot of hardware and a lot of steps, so it's kind of time consuming, but it's not bad, really. If you have two people, I think it would make the process go a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Um, but as you can see, it's doable, you know, one person by yourself if it's a, um, if it's a nine foot door. If you've got a bigger door, like a 16 or an 18 foot door, you definitely will probably need two people to be able to do that. But anyway, hopefully you guys find that video helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind, and we'll see you in the next video.